next video in the systems programming series. We're continuing talking about chapter two, now on to section 2.2 of the textbook, Dive Into Systems. And here we're gonna start talking about pointer variables. So you can read a sort of general description of what pointer variables do, but I think it makes more sense to just kind of skip right over to this picture where we say that a pointer variable points to some address in memory. So what this is, it is one variable storing a number, essentially, that, um, that is the address of some other variable. And, you know, why you would want to do, the, do this, um, uh, I think probably will just become clear as we get into some examples. But, you know, for now, I guess just kind of absorb the concept here, which is that, uh, right, so pointer is, you know, PTR is here itself a variable, but it's holding an address, and that address is the address of some other variable, like whatever this thing is over here, and that, this address, right, you think of the box as the address, uh, and the value inside the box is, uh, you know, whatever is the value stored by the variable. Okay, uh, we've already talked about how uh, C is by default uh, with almost all things pass by uh, value, meaning that it, you know, when you pass a, uh, something into a function, it makes a copy of the value rather than pointing to the same address in memory so that, you know, the function is uh, actually acting on exactly the variable itself in, in a sense that was passed in. So anyway, well, we will see that, you know, what, you know, I guess a, a natural question uh, in response to the whole idea of being passed by value is, well, what if you didn't want it to be passed by value? I, there are many, many situations where you actually want a function to change the content of some variable that is declared outside of the function. So how do you accomplish that behavior? Well, it's exactly this concept of, you know, what you actually do is pass the function, the pointer to the variable that you want it to mutate. To start learning some of the syntax involved here, this is how you declare a pointer to uh, like a variable that will be a pointer, right? So, so here PTR is the variable. Its type is this int space star. Uh, I believe the spacing here is actually flexible, so that you could call it int star space PTR, and right, and and I think other possibilities exist as well. But uh, this is a fairly standard. Uh, convention for how to write the syntax, int space star ptr. So this declares that ptr is a variable that holds an address, and that address is the address of an integer. That's what the int part is doing there. So, uh, you know, you could also alternately do this C pointer, a char, right, a pointer to a char object, and it has this syntax. So, so when you declare something to be a, a variable holding an address, not only do you have to declare that it is a variable holding address, you also have to declare what kind of thing that address holds. In this case, pointer or char or other options as we'll see later. Uh, so now nobody or just about nobody actually knows the physical address, right, the, the, you know, could write out on paper in, say, ones and zeros or hexadecimal code or whatever, what is the address of this variable, right? That's just not how we do things. So if, you know, some things are meant to be, uh, meant to hold an address, how does the address get there if we don't uh, specify the address, if we don't type it out? Well, uh, it's like this, right? You declare an int, that's just a regular int, right? That's not a pointer. And we've already declared PTR up above as a pointer to an int, and then this and syntax, right? Writing uh, and x gets the address of the variable x, and that address is put into PTR. 
Okay, and likewise here, so you just see another example of exactly the same idea. And now, right, at the, after having executed that code, PTR or pointer uh, holds the address of X, and so in that sense uh, points to the variable X. Uh, you have to get the types right. Uh, so if you try to uh, take an integer variable, get its address, and hand that over to a char pointer, uh, it's going to throw an error. There is such a thing as a null pointer, which is often useful mostly basically for testing to make sure that you don't have it, right? Because the null pointer does not point to any address in memory. And if you try to use it, I guess, you, you know, I haven't even shown you what it's like to use a pointer yet. So, so what have we covered so far? We have covered declaring a pointer. We have uh, covered... Uh, getting the address, right, putting an address into a pointer variable. We haven't yet talked about how do you use the pointer to actually get over to the address. That's coming up immediately. Um, so here, yeah, let's, let's actually talk about that first. So it's right here. Um, here we have the pointer variable yet again. We assign it the address of x. And then here, this is the syntax for a following a pointer to its destination and putting a value there. So this is how you, in a sense, use pointers, right? Um, is, uh, uh, right, the uh, star pointer says, follow that address over to the location in memory, and when you get there, put eight in that location. So that's, in a sense, how you use these things. And so if you ever tried to do this, right, if you ever tried to use a pointer, when that pointer is null, right, this is, this is how you declare a null address, and the null address does not point to anywhere. So if you try to use it, right, if you try, th this, by the way, is called dereferencing. So if pointer holds null, right, um, and you try to dereference it, you try to do something like this while its address is null, you will get an error. Okay, there's some nice uh, shortcut syntax, so to speak, which is that uh, you can declare int and then star pointer one, uh, declaring that to be a pointer to some integer, star pointer two, again, declaring that to be some pointer to some integer. And then just regular x and y, declaring those to just be regular ints. So it's you know kind of nice to know that you can kind of you can just write int once and declare some things to be pointers and other things to just be ints, all in the same line. Okay. Uh, so what happens here in this example code? X is initialized as eight. Pointer two is uh, initialized as the address of x. Pointer one is initialized as null. What happens next? We dereference pointer two, right? We follow pointer two to its address and put a 10 there. Uh, we might as well look at the diagram and see that effectively that's, uh, that causes this, since it causes this diagram, I guess. Uh, what happens next? Uh, we take, we dereference pointer two, meaning that we follow it to its you know, location in memory. And what that should at this moment do is get the number 10. So here we are getting the number 10, adding three to it. So Y now stores the value 13. So that's why that's in the diagram. Okay, now we take pointer two's address and we put that address into pointer one. So now they have the same address, so that's why here in this diagram they're now pointing to the same location in memory, namely the location that pointer two had all along. And then uh, here, pointer one, and this is worth you know thinking about, right? This is almost kind of the point of doing all of this, is that if you now mutate pointer one, right? You dereference it assign the value 100 there, right? So you follow the pointer over to its address and uh, put the value 100 there. Then when you come back over to pointer two, pointer two is now also pointing to the value 100, right? So, so you know, right, the thing that I want to communicate here is that um, by mutating, right, 
the value using pointer one, pointer two is affected, right? In a, you know, in a sense, the change to pointer one has bled out uh, and affected pointer two. And that is kind of what you want to have happen when you are uh, working with pointers, right? That's, you know, like if you want things to be static and you don't want these changes to flow around to the various variables, then you would not use pointers. But so to some degree, the, the whole point of using pointers is to have these changes uh, uh, sort of uh, ripple out to the rest of the program. Okay, so what do we do next? Next, we take pointer one, we give it the variable y, so now pointer one is pointing to y. We assign, right, we dereference it and give it the value 80, so that explains what's going on in the diagram. This uh, may cause an error, depending on whether or not you successfully write an address, but whether it actually causes an error or not, this is almost certainly bad, right? You don't want to do this because you are simply writing down exactly the address uh, in memory. And, you know, for one thing, you know, one reason why you may not, uh, you know, even if you could actually name numerically the address in memory that you want, if you ship your program to some other computer and its memory addresses are different, then you will get unexpected behavior. So in general, you don't want to do this. Uh, you can and do, you know, typically do want to do this, and dereferencing and assigning the value is fine. So that's how these things are intended to be used. Okay, this is a, an error. This is what I was uh, describing earlier, that if the pointer stores the null address and then you try to dereference it, you will get an error. Um, uh, here, again, right, the problem with this is hard coding the uh, address. That's not a good idea. Uh, here, uh, well, depending, right, you know, uh, this kind of depends on what X is, but typically this is a bad idea because, right, X is probably like 20 or something like that. If it's a, you know, somewhat normal integer like that, then it's going to cause a crash. Oh, now, if you have somehow designed things so that X actually stores a good memory address, then this right, might be okay. But anyway. But the, yeah, but typically, right, you wouldn't, you know, the, the, although this might be theoretically possible, it's almost certainly not what you really want to write. Probably, if you ever see code written like that, then this is probably what was intended. And this kind of safeguarding, this little pattern right here, where you uh, declare a pointer, and sometimes you do something. You, what you're going to see is that very often we will use malloc, and you know, we'll talk about what malloc is. But you know, what it's supposed to do is give your pointer variable some address, right? A, a, a useful address. But very often, what you do immediately after using malloc is you will test the pointer to see whether it's null. Sometimes that can happen, and so you want to test it. And it, you know, if it is null, then, uh, or right, if it is null, then you don't want to use it. But if it's not null, like here, then you're free to use it. So anyway, uh, more on all of these ideas soon.